Guys, thought I would tell you a little bit about uh, uh, what's eventually going to be my hardwood flooring and uh, what I've been using for my window trim on the interior and uh, baseboard material, that kind of stuff. So, I don't want to give you vertigo here, but way over on that side of the property, I'll, I'll insert a little photo or something, I cut down, fancy word I guess is felled, um, three huge white oak trees that were definitely at the end of their life. They were uh, a lot of dead branches uh, on the lower half of the canopy. Um, so anyway, I took those, those three logs and we cut, I'm sorry, those three trees and we cut those into about, uh, about I think I had 12 or 13 uh, 30 inch diameter-ish by 14 to 16 foot long logs and then we hired a sawmill which I'll insert some photos of and he parked his sawmill right there and we had them all cut into um, boards into planks so this is a pile of all my white oak it was cut uh, one inch uh, green and it's been drying there since 07 uh, the end of 07 like November of 07 and it's the spring of 12 right now so you know four good years of drying uh, almost uh, almost five now um, so it's really dry at least it's dry enough for casual use unheated um, you know a cabin I was gonna put this in a house that had air conditioning and you know forced air heating I might kiln dry it the rest of the way down but it's it's at about 15, 16 percent, um, you know, the same as construction lumber that you buy at, you know, Home Depot Lowe's. Uh, so there's a big pile. These are um, all stickered so that the air can go through it and dry. It's been sitting here, like I said, for four and a half years or so. Um, if I had to do it again and you're planning on doing this, I would not do this tarp, you know, ridiculousness. I just kind of half-ass that. I would do some type of chunk of metal corrugated roofing or something like that. These tarps have been, I've replaced these tarps twice now and they get holes and, but I stay on top of it every other week or once a month I come out and drain all this water that collects in this, in these little um, slow points. But anyway, all white oak. I'm gonna dive into this in a couple of uh, months. Depending on how hot it gets this summer, I might do it in this, this fall. But dive into that, and that'll uh, I'll surface plane it all up. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to tongue and groove it, or if I'm going to, you know, face screw it and then plug it. But we'll figure that out. This other pile I have dove into. It's been a lot of fun seeing what this stuff yields. This is mostly white oak. There was one red oak tree that I took down that was completely dead. It was standing right where the cabin is now and it sat for a year or two on the ground and then it just was sitting there so when the guy came out to cut up my white oak I had him cut up that red oak a couple of logs too and it turned out great. So uh, it was all rough sawn, bandsaw, uh, you know, wood miser uh, type of mill. Um, some of these are uh, 14, 16 feet long. Um, so today, last couple of months, this spring I've been diving into this stuff. Uh, I have this nice little uh, Delta 13 inch surface planer. I've had it for a long time. It's been in my wood shop since about 98, 99. The blade changes on it are, are real easy. Uh, it takes double sided blades so you just flip them around. You got another fresh set of blades. But just been running this stuff through there and it just uh, it's coming out really really nice. Um, I'll take in the cabin and show you what I've been using it for so far. Um, this is that North Bay I talked about in that first video. Um, so I just put this on today. I, the lighting here is horrible, but we'll see what happens. So um, I've got this, this is, uh, white oak stuff I've been using. So I've got this little like picture ledge rail. This is one inch thick, about two inches wide, a little radius edge with a router on it. I pocket screwed that right into the sip panel. Great thing about the sip panel is I've got that behind the behind the drywall is that uh, sheet of OSB that's the full width of the wall. So you can screw anything into it at any place. It works really well. So I've uh, been using all that white oak and that, a little bit of that red oak for window trim. Um, it's just um, 
The verticals are three quarter inches thick and the header at the top is one inch thick. Is this little header is kind of proud. This camera's probably not going to show it, but this is a one inch thick board with a three quarter inch board below it. And then this little picture rail, rail type thing. It's one inch thick. Um, in, the, in the description of the video, I'll, there's a Ted Benson wrote a bunch of books on timber framing. I, I wrote, or wrote, yeah, right. I read all his books. Everything I could get my hands on. I uh, taught myself, you know, how to how to cut this frame myself and um, put it up. But he's got a he's got a description of interior trim for timber frames, and it's exactly what I used. I, I love it. Um, I'll um, in the um, description of the video. I'll put the name of the book and even the page number. Uh, I just love that three quarter inch stock, left and right. You know, if those were uh, styles, I guess, and then the rail at the top, the header, uh, it looks kind of like a lintel because it's a little thicker, a little proud. So let me explain a little bit, uh, kind of all over the map, sorry guys. Um, because that material wasn't kiln dried, um, and I think it is going to move a little bit more after I planed it, I opted to screw all that material. Panel. So um, I kind of like the look of that. I have done that on other projects. Um, you just do a little, see if I can get this camera to show this. Um, it's just a little countersunk hole with some nice thick 8 gauge um, wood screws. And then I um, will cut a wood plug. You can buy a little bit. It looks like a hollow piece of pipe that will cut a plug. And uh, a little dab of glue. Pound the plug in there. Flush trim saw. Cut the plug off. And it... Uh, it's not invisible, but it uh, it doesn't show up. I mean, it's not real. Okay. Obvious. So the reason for the screws is that it it's really solid. It's into that OSB. Well, it's actually into my framing on the side, and then into the OSB on the right side. And uh, I've got those um, throughout all this trim. Um, so I've got to plug them, trim them flush. But uh, I think if I just had used uh, if I had just used finished nails, I think this stuff would just move all over the place.